and native land. True patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, so we will uh, continue on. Thanks to a member of our very own Grand Prix Boys Choir for the audio and to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country. Uh, we'll move into the adoption of our previous council meeting minutes. Can I get an adoption for that set of minutes from November 30th? Councillor Minha. Mm -hmm. Yes, again. <clears throat> I move the council adopt the minutes of the city council meeting held on Monday, November 30th, 2020, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Are there any errors or omissions that we need to correct before we adopt that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. I see that carry unanimously. Um, and then uh, that'll take us to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Bressy, we had two additional items that we wanted to add. Uh, would you like to move the adoption of the agenda? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Gibbons. So I would move that Council adopt the agenda as presented, but with the additions of item 7.2, public member appointments, and item 7.3, special council meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Um, any discussion on or debate on the agenda with the addition of those two items, 7.2 boards and committees and 7.3 special council meeting. Seeing none, uh, and I'll just acknowledging we're joined by Councilor O'Toole. Thanks, uh, Councilor O'Toole. I know it was difficult connecting. Glad to see you could make it. Um, I'll call for the vote on the adoption of the agenda with those additional items. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Um, and that'll bring us to the open delegation portion of our agenda. Uh, this is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for any member of the public uh, to address council. Uh, we do appreciate it when people let us know ahead of time that they wish to make a presentation to council. Um, and we do have two opportunities uh, with our new structure of council meetings, one uh, in this uh, open delegation section uh, and one in the scheduled delegations in the in evening session. Uh, I'll just look at the administration to see if there's anybody that let us know that they wish to present or if there's anybody on the line that wish to present to council. Uh, Ms. Karbyshewski. Thank you, Mayor Given. There are no uh, delegation requests for this session of the, the meeting today. Great. Thanks very much, uh, Arlene. And, uh, you know, I just would note to, to the public, um, we shouldn't uh, underappreciate how open the City of Grand Prairie Council is. Uh, in my experience, our council has always been willing to welcome members of the public to the council table to express their concerns. Uh, sometimes those concerns are directly related to items on our agenda. Sometimes they're not. Um, but I think we should appreciate the fact that it's not like this in every community. It's actually uh, much more challenging to get in front of council and many, many other communities in our province. And I've always appreciated the city of Grand Prairie um, creates these opportunities very willingly. Um, and uh, I think the public should appreciate that. And, and council should appreciate that we uh, make great efforts to ensure that the public are able to be engaged in our processes. Um, but seeing that there's nobody here, uh, we'll close the open delegation section uh, and we have no unfinished business. And then it'll take us to uh, reports and item 7.1 and uh, Mr. Karbyshewski, I think that is you as well uh, with a report on a uh, petition. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, so on November 6th, a uh, petition to repeal bylaw C1426, which is our mandatory mask face covering bylaw, was filed with the city. The petition was signed by 2,405 signatures. And upon review, 1,262 of the signatures 
did meet the requirements under the Municipal Government Act. Pursuant to section 223, a petition must be signed by the electors of the municipality equal in number to at least 10% of the population. For the city of Grand Prairie, this equates to 6,908 eligible signatures. The eligible signatures collected at 1,262 represents 1.9% of the population. Therefore, the city manager has declared this petition not sufficient. Pursuant to section 226, the council or the minister is not required to take any notice of this petition. Therefore, administration recommends council receive the declaration of insufficiency as presented in this report today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Karbyshewski. Um, open for discussion and uh, hopefully motions. Councilor Bressy. Great, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, just a question I had was 569 signatures did not meet the requirements under section 225.3F of the act, which means that they weren't certain persons is the kind of funny language the act uses. I assume that means that they weren't residents of the city of Grand Prairie. Is that assumption correct? Thank you, Mayor Given. That is correct. Uh, certain other persons um, are not electors of this municipality. Oh, gotcha. So they might be residents of another municipality. It might be a Grand Prairie resident that's not old enough or isn't a citizen or something like that. That's correct. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, unless there are any other questions, I'd look for a motion as recommended by administration, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Gavin. I move that the uh, council receive the declaration of insufficiency of the petition to repeal bylaw C-1426, the temporary mandatory face covering uh, bylaw. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion or debate on that motion to receive the information? Seeing none. Um, yeah, Councillor Bretzi, then Councillor Friesen. Great, thank you. Yeah, I'll be voting in favor of this, but just something I wanted to mention was this was the first time this council uh, has had a petition filed under the MGA with us. And it was interesting learning about the requirements for the act and they're quite arduous in terms of meeting not 10% of the electors, but 10% of the population. And I wonder if it might be councils, worth council's time in the future to take a look at the requirements for petitions and under the act, we can make it easier to get a sufficient petition. So I don't know if that's something, I'm thinking about that a little bit over the holidays. I don't know if that's something I want to formally bring to a committee at this time and direct administration to do work just in recognition that they're also putting on an election and this election is going to have a lot of extra things added to it by the province. So I don't know if it's something that I want to raise beyond just commenting right now, but it is just something I wanted to put a bug in council's, council's ear about that we do have the ability of the act to make it easier to succeed in a petition. And we might think about doing that. That being said, this was only 1.9% of the of the population that hit it. This wouldn't have hit that threshold that I support anyways, but I just wanted to raise that in general anyways. Okay, thanks Councilor Bressy. Councilor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I did just want to acknowledge um, the the folks who put this petition together and even more so I, I understand that uh, there were you know business owners who hosted um, copies of the petition for signing and it it always strikes me how um, willing our residents are to you know put it on the line for something because I know that there was a great deal of um, uh, pushback on businesses and I, you know we all are very well aware of how how um, much discussion and and um, you know two-sided this whole conversation has been in our community and um, I, I would say this to either side of this discussion that um, I'm just so proud of how Grand Prairie residents um, rise to something they believe in. And while this um, is not successful and um, 
I appreciate that there's some folks willing to put this together and uh, get behind it, including business owners that were willing to. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Um, was there any other discussion or debate on Councillor O'Toole's motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. I believe that carries unanimously. Uh, and that'll take us to item 7.2, uh, appointments, public member appointments to city boards and committees. Now, council, I believe uh, the clerk has uh, circulated a, uh, an email for us. We've got a pretty long list of public member appointments uh, as we do on an annual basis. Um, I'm happy to start wherever council would like to start. I see Council Thiessen, you had your hand up and so you must be ready to make a go of this. At least kick us off, Mayor Given. Um, and uh, with that being said, I would move that council approve the appointment of Ejibola Adeto Kumbo Taiwo, Wendy Bosch, Joan Nellis, Darren Olson, Cindy Park, Dean Radburn, and Scott Rossler to the Economic Development Advisory Committee for a one year term ending in 2021. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Um, any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Um, council, is anybody, Councillor Blackburn? Thank you, Mary Given. Uh, for the GP Airport Commission, I would move that council approve appointment of Fletcher Boodle for a three year term, Bob Hall for a one year term, Shelley Sorensen for a one year term, and Whitney Wild for a two year term. Um, on the GP Airport Commission. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Uh, where would we like to go next? Council? Councillor Friesen. Thank you. I would like to um, recommend that Council appoint to the Policing Advisory Committee for one year terms the following individuals Kelly Benning, Jasmine Groff, Peter Ma, Joanne Peckham, and Scott Little. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on uh, that recommendation? Again, seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, We've got a couple left. Uh, Council, who'd like to go next? Uh, Councillor O'Toole? Yeah, I'd make a motion to uh, or start off with the Grand Prairie Library Board. These are for two-year terms. Nicole Chappell and Erica Fisher. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Again, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Um, and where would we like to go next? This is rolling really smoothly, Council. Thanks, Councilor Minhas, you ready? I'll move the CCA advisory committee meetings for two year term for Irene Miller. Okay, thank you. Uh, Irene Miller for a two year term on CKC advisory. Thanks, Councilor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? That carries unanimously. And uh, where are we next? We've got a couple left. Councilor Ressi. Well, if nobody wants to touch the long one, um, I'll move that we appoint to the Community Advisory Committee in terms of one year, uh, Paulo Carroll, Tamika DeGroot, Valerie nicholson Gusick, John Ruddick, and Tom West. And for periods of two years, Tammy Brown, Jeff Urbach, Bobby Joe Matheson, Lauren Radburn, Thomas Silka, and Alan Tibble. And just to speak to this and all the other ones too, uh, we had a lot of applications for roles this time. I think it's the most that we've seen this council term. And I was really pleased to see all the application forms that I had to wade through. So it's like a lot more time on the weekend than I had originally budgeted. And I think that that's just, uh, I want to give a shout out to our administration. I know that we've done work this term reforming how we approach boards and committees. 
And I think we're seeing that in the increased applications we have and a lot of quality applications. I know that there were all of us who are seeing people not get appointed to, that we wanted to see appointed. There just wasn't room for them. And I think that's a great problem for council to have. So not just for this committee, for all of them, thank you for everybody that applied and thank you so much to our administration for making this a more attractive possibility for people. Thank you, Councillor Bressy. Any other discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. And I think we've got just uh, uh, at least one left, I think. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, finally, I would like to move that council appoint to the Subdivision Appeal Board for three years, Audrey Mkua. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously as well. Um, thanks, Council, and, and I'd like to echo Councillor Bressy's comments. Uh, thanks to administration for managing an efficient process uh, and publicizing in a way that makes it uh, visible uh, to, to community members so they know they can apply. And thanks to all the community members uh, this year and over the years who put their name forward to serve in this way. Um, I think governance in, uh, in a community like Grand Prairie is not just the council that you see. Um, governance is a system and a system of individuals who are volunteering their time in this way is an important part of that system. So uh, thank you very much to all the public members who put their names forward. Um, that'll take us to item 7.3. Uh, I'll speak to this uh, council. Uh, as mayor, I have the ability to uh, call a special meeting on my own, um, but I have a recommendation uh, for council that council direct administration uh, organize a special council meeting for January 4th uh, to review the deputy mayor schedule and council member appointments. Um, I think it's appropriate uh, at the start of the year to look at that schedule uh, to be able to address any significant changes that arise. Um, and I think it's appropriate that council uh, direct administration to take that motion so the community is aware that we're taking that action. Um, is there anybody that would care to make that motion? Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, so moved as per your wording. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Uh, is there any discussion or debate on that motion? Again, seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Um, and I'll take us into committee business, uh, starting with 8.1 Pursuit of Excellence Committee and Councillor Plot, I think you're first up with the last uh, Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting ever. Yeah, it is sad. We've, we've had a really good committee. I'm chaired on that with uh, Councillor Friesen and, and uh, Councillor Mayhoff. And we've, we've, we've got a good group of people, so it was sad to have our last one. But we did give away some last money from the 1995 Legacy Fund here. And uh, I guess we'll start off with you give $1,000 of athlete funding to Ethan Fernandez for freestyle skiing. We then had three Come Fly With Me scholarships with $500 going to Brooklyn Johnson for trampoline, $600 for Ian Stobie for mixed martial arts, and $500 for Sydney Kinder Water for judo. Uh, then we had our couple scholarships. We have a Bob Newfeld scholarship for $1,200 to go to Sydney Kinder Water with judo. Um, interesting story, this, this girl was, uh, I think, early high school, and she has been to several places around the world and trains in Montreal and all year. So just as you're hearing these stories of these, of these kids, you realize some of them have, have, have traveled more than a lot of us may ever do just from sport uh, at this age. So it's pretty neat to see. And lastly, we had a Perky McCullough scholarship for $2,700 to Ian Stobie with mixed martial arts. Um, so as Mary Gibbons said, that is our last one. And it was saddened to me when I was reading those just out now to realize that Bob Newfeld and Perky McCullough, two people that were very instrumental with this fund and in our community. Um, we have this honorable way of giving something back every name with their thing, uh, with their name on it. And so I hope we find a, another creative way to make sure that their names live on somewhere in our community or somewhere else. So these scholarships were a way to do that. But uh, and that uh, that was a Pursuit of Excellence Committee and uh, the notes from that meeting. So I would ask Council to adopt the minutes from the Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting held Wednesday, December 20, 2020, as presented. Wednesday, December 20, 2nd, 2020, as presented. Boy, that's too many twos and zeros there for me. <laughs> that's a lot of twos and zeros. Thanks, Councilor yeah. Plot. Um, and and Councilor Plot, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, or, or maybe another yeah. member of the, the team administration, but uh, have we, did we transfer those, the responsibility to do the Pursuit of Excellence funding recommendations to the new Community Advisory Committee? Is that one of the things that group of 11 people will have to take on in the new year? 
Yes, correct, Mayor Gibbons. So they'll 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 be moved across. So there, there, this isn't void in the community. There's a new opportunity for them to to apply for funding from. Um, this 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 stream, I guess, has ran its course and it'll be rolled into that. So nice catch, Mayor Gibbons. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's good to see the city will still be supporting amateur athletes and officials in in training and uh, getting out there to compete across uh, the province, the, the country, and the world. Um, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously, I think. Uh, Council, if you can just make sure you keep your hands up until I get a chance to, to call it so I can see the screen. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think I got that one. Um, and uh, that'll take state point two community services committee. Uh, Councilor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I would move that council adopt the minutes of the community services committee meeting held Tuesday, December eighth, twenty twenty, as presented. Thanks, Councilor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries. Council Blackburn. Thank you. Uh, item 8.2.1 is uh, emergency community group funding. Um, I would move that council approve emergency community group funding in the amount of $100,000 for the Grand Prairie Curling Center. And to speak very briefly uh, to this, the, uh, the city owns the building. However, the uh, curling center is run by an association. Um, with the challenges that we've had in this past year, they're certainly in a in a, a, a cash flow crunch, and uh, we would far rather see them um, succeed uh, as an organization than have to take over the curling center ourselves. And so, um, I would uh, recommend that that uh, people vote in favor of this emergency funding. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Blackburn. Uh, any uh, discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, Councilor Blackburn, anything else you wanted to highlight from this set of minutes? Sure, I'll highlight a couple of things. Uh, we had a very interesting presentation from um, uh, from. Ryan Pomeroy regarding the idea of a high performance sports center, which would be something that uh, would likely be a regional facility. And um, we're hoping that um, there will be some um, interest in that at the, uh, uh, at the regional level. And we'll, we'll learn more about that as time goes on. Um, Jeff Urbeck from the Art Gallery of Grand Prairie came to make a presentation to us as a council uh, presenting a commemorative piece from their current um, exhibit called the Curve Art Exhibition. Uh, it's it's a large scale uh, COVID-19 timetable, something that I think will be uh, of interest for many years to come for people to browse and look over. Um, and then from um, Director Miller's report, just a couple of things. Um, Excited to see that the colored light system has been installed at the sundial at Center 2000, which uh, brings uh, for this season anyway white, red, and green lights to uh, to highlight the um, the sundial with. And uh, I've seen pictures; it looks terrific. Uh, I'll just mention regarding transit that, as in previous years, transit will be shut down early on Christmas Eve. Um, the last trips leaving downtown will be at 7.15 uh, in the evening. Uh, and due to the additional provincial restrictions, the transit system will not be extending its hours on New Year's Eve and will operate uh, regular weekday hours. Um, a little bit unfortunate, but I imagine there's not going to be many people moving around anyway due to the restrictions. And that's all I have for this time. Thanks, Councilor. <laughs> Uh, so I think that'll take us to the Corporate Services Committee and Councillor Minhas. Thank you, well, Mayor Given. Uh, move the Council adopt the minutes of Corporate Services Committee held on Tuesday, December the 8th, 2020, as presented. Councillor Minhas, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Minhas. 
8.3.1 awarding the bylaw C1428 operating credit line. This is for the next year. The uh, administration asked for 5 million credit line needed, needed to borrow, uh, not to borrow for uh, COBRA 19. So in case they need it, so they can use it. We haven't used it last year, $35 million, but this is for just security reason. So we need, had to we get the motion. So I'll start with the council gave the first reading to bylaw C1428 beginning being borrowing bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Council Menhoff. There's no discussion or debate on first reading. So I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Council Menhoff. Move the second reading to the bylaw C1428. Okay, thanks very much, Council Minhas. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Um, I just make the observation that this is a much more typical process. Council, you know, I think the operating line of credit, Council Minhas mentioned, was atypical. Was it was different this year when we had the $35 million uh, sort of expansion, but the city typically carries an operating line of credit to manage uh, the differences in our cash flow throughout the course of the year, uh, with most people paying their taxes at a certain point in the year. Um, but the city needing cash over the course of the year. And so this is uh, an annual piece of business um, uh, not to be connected with uh, the change that we had to do uh, as a preparation for potential impacts from COVID-19. Um, any other discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for vote on second reading. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Councilor Minhas. Okay, I have third reading. Uh of the bylaw C1428 at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councilman Haas. So this is a, for those watching, uh, this is a motion to have third and final reading this evening. Uh, if this motion doesn't carry unanimously, then that last reading of this bylaw would come back at the next city council meeting. Is there any discussion or debate on the merits of having third and final reading this evening? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? That motion does carry unanimously. Councilor Minhas. I ask the council to give a third reading to bylaw C1428 being a borrowed bylaw. Thank okay. you. Thanks very much, Councilor Minhas. Uh, one last opportunity, everyone. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor. And that motion carries unanimously as well. Uh, Councilor Minhas, anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, yeah. Yes, I got a couple of things and um, assessment and taxation assessor will be moving on to the doing the inspections on the properties under the construction for for the December 31st year end. Tax are mailed out the tax reminder, reminder the letter to the property owners with the outstanding balance. The next deadline is of, is the January 1st. And the finance, the budget book is being updated reflect to the final decision made by the council that should be available to the public soon. The city website administration has received 7.4 million in MOSP funding from the province, which is a good thing. GIC and IPS development of public facing GS service catalog site is nearly completion. This will improve facing use in interactions of downloading and accessing our map and app. That's what I have. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Councilor Minha. Uh, Councilor Platt, I think it's uh, back to you again. Uh, thanks, Mayor Gibbon. I just moved that uh, Council receive the committee meeting held for the protective and social services meeting on December 8th, 2020. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Councilor Platt. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, uh, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Councilor Platt. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Well, uh, just a couple things from that meeting, or did you want me to go into the next motion first? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I think go, let's skip the motions and I'll, we'll come back okay. to see if there's anything you want to uh, So just, I'd like to make a motion that uh, Council supports uh, uh, thus playing out the loan for Willow Place with a hundred for a sum of $100,471.20 and a $5,500 penalty. Uh, so that's the motion that uh, Council could approve today. 
Thanks, Council Plot. I think that there was uh, a little bit of an addition there subject to the conditions identified by administration because I think administration has recommended council place some con conditions on the closure of that, uh, that loan. Sorry, you are correct. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, subject conditions identified by administration. My apologies. Yeah, no, no worries. Thanks, uh, thanks, Councilor Plot. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Uh, seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. And Councilor Plot, if you wanted to highlight anything from that for the minute. Yeah, just we had um, our director update from our director, Manuel. Um, last week was International Day of Disabilities, and I uh, just want to say it's, it was great to see John Kriska, the owner of Better and Friends, receive the Inclusive Community Award. Um, the fire department was busy last week with uh, the changes to retail and with the new COVID restrictions, so they fielded over 70 calls from, from people in, in the city. Um, we, sticking on the fire department, we had a, a good presentation from Fire Chief Boston about medical co-response and some options to council, and uh, we, we received the report for information after lots of dialogue, but it was a good report, very well, very lengthy report. And um, and then we also had a little bit of a verbal discussion about uh, a Chamber of Commerce uh, letter that come forward uh, for around affordable housing. So, um, and with that, that was everything from our meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Um, and does that bring us around to Councillor Bresky then? Great, thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council adopt the minutes of the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee meeting held Tuesday, December 8, 2020, as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Um, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Bressy. Thank you. I would move the council give first reading to bylaw C1167A, being an, an amendment to the Brochu Industrial Park Servicing Bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Council Bressy. Uh, no discussion or debate on first reading. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Council Bressy. Thank you. I would move the council give second reading to bylaw C1167A. And just to speak to this, the Brochu Industrial Park isn't the public infrastructure and it isn't built to standards that the city usually expects in its industrial areas. And that includes that there's no pipes to many of the uh, properties in the area. Uh, back in 2003 and in 2006, the council of the day worked with property owners to see if they'd like to fund expanded infrastructure in the area and property owners back then said no thank you they didn't want to and so then the city council of the day back in 2006 passed a bylaw saying that nobody can subdivide um that nobody can subdivide any of these lots until a until a sewage and a water pipe is brought out there basically they're built to county standard right now and the council today said build them like a city development so that there's city services there if you want to make development here more dense than it is right now and our administration recently went and reviewed this bylaw and came back with a recommendation that we update the bylaw saying that they still need to get the city standard of having water to their properties so that if there's a fire our firefighters can get there on scene and safely put it out but saying that if they want to do some of the sanitary service on site, they can do that. And so if this bylaw passes, uh, properties out there would still be required for to have city water to subdivide, but they wouldn't be required to have city sewage. And why that's significant is there's a water pipe that goes through much of the industrial park. There's not a sewage pipe that goes through much of the industrial park. So today, there's a whole bunch of properties that would have to pay for very expensive pipe if they wanted to subdivide. If we pass this bylaw, then all of a sudden they'll be able to subdivide for a lot less money. And so passing this bylaw really is a way that we're making it easier and more cost effective for property owners to do what they wish to do with their property. So I'd encourage council to support this. Okay. Thanks very much, Council Bressy. Um, any discussion or debate on second reading? Um, I'll uh, just uh, say that I support the, the, uh, the motion in the direction of Council's uh, heading here and uh, make the observation that this is the usefulness of reviewing city pilot, uh, uh, bylaws and policies on a regular basis. This is one of the last things that came out of the policy review committee before we built that policy review process into our standing uh, committee agendas. Um, and this was a by, uh, policy, sorry, a council policy that had been on the books for a long, long time. Um, and if we hadn't have looked at it, 
um, then we wouldn't have found this opportunity to remove some of the barriers for development. Um, and so I think uh, this speaks to two things. One, this council desire to remove barriers to development wherever possible and reasonable. And number two, about the usefulness of reviewing council policies from time to time and not just leaving them on set it and forget it mode. Um, so uh, on both those points, I'd encourage council to support the uh, second reading. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor of second reading. Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Councilor Bressey. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that council give, or that council have third reading of bylaw C 1168A at this meeting. Okay, thanks so much, Councilor Bressey. Um, again, uh, if this motion doesn't carry unanimously, then that third and final reading would come back at a subsequent council meeting. Is there any discussion or debate on the merits of having third and final readings this evening? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Uh, so we can't have third reading, Council Bressey. Thank you, I would move the council give third reading to bylaw C 1167A being an amendment to the Brochure Industrial Park Servicing Bylaw. Thanks very much, Council Bressey. Uh, last opportunity for discussion or debate on this topic. Uh, anything, uh, anybody wish to answer before we call for the vote on third and final reading? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Uh, please vote. All those in favor? Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Um, thanks, Councilor Bressy. I think we've got another bylaw in front of us. Yeah, thank you. I would move the council give first reading to bylaw C1310 being, in, being the use of park land by. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. Um, no discussion or debate on first reading. I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously, Council Bressy. Thank you, I would move the council give second reading to bylaw C1310. And just to speak to this, this is again coming out of our um, policy and bylaw review committee administration went and just modernized and updated our parkland bylaw. And there were a number of common sense, but not hugely significant changes. I think the biggest one is there's, there's some things that we don't wanna have happen in our parks that would be criminal offenses that will now also be bylaw offenses. A great example of that is applying graffiti. Um, the problem with it being a criminal offense is criminal offenses are have a high burden of proof, they're expensive, they're long to prosecute, where a bylaw ticket is a more more immediate penalty you can give to someone. And also, frankly, there's some things that people shouldn't be doing in our parks, but having a criminal record would probably be too high of a punishment, such as a teenager doing something stupid and putting a bit of graffiti on a city park. It's probably appropriate for them to have a small fine rather than have a criminal record that costs taxpayers thousands of dollars to dollars to give them. So I think uh, creating some bylaw offenses that weren't previously there before, but are still common sense is the biggest new thing in this bylaw. But there's, there's other tweaks such as now there's gonna be regulation around drones and parks, technology that wasn't around when this bylaw was first, first created. And so relatively minor, I think an important bylaw to modernize. So I hope the council will support it. Thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on second reading? I don't see anybody raising their hand. Then I will call for the vote on second reading. All those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. Councilor Bressy. Thank you, I would move the council have third reading of bylaw C-1310 at this meeting. Okay. Thanks, Councilor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on the merits of having third and final reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? That does carry unanimously, Councilor Bressey. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move the council give third reading to bylaw C-1310 being the use of parkland bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Bressey. Last opportunity for any discussion or debate on third and final reading. Uh, I don't see anybody uh, itching to, to get into the debate, so I'll call for the vote on third and final reading. All those in favor? Thank you, and that passes unanimously. Councilor Bressey, do you wanna present any highlights from that meeting other than the, the ones we've already seen? Yeah, thank you. I think the uh, one thing that I'll highlight is something that came from our director service area update, and that was with our snow plowing, where a problem that we've had is when snow plows are plowing in formation, there's a few of them out at once, often one would get stopped at a red light while the rest could go through the green light. And that would create problems and inefficiencies in the system. So right now our engineer, our engineering and our transportation department are working together to 
let snowplows hook up into the signal preemption so that a snowplow, when it's information, would always get a green light in the city, which is the that light preemption system is a really expensive system that we installed that now is just sitting there. So it's a low cost way to get more use out of that system and to get snow removed more, more efficiently. So I think that was just one example of many we've seen this term of our administration doing good work to deliver, to deliver better services with less money. So I appreciate it hearing about that. Great. Thanks, Councilor Resby, for that highlight and, and uh, raising that one so the public's aware of it. Um, I think that handles all of our committee business. Um, and then on our agenda, we have a letter of correspondence from Alberta Justice and Solicitor General. Uh, I'll just uh, say to Council, I think this is a result of um, first our letter to the Premier, uh, which was followed up with a meeting uh, with the Minister of Municipal Affairs um, to sort of more clearly state what our, our desire was. Um, and I'm open to whatever sort of course of direction Council would like to take with respect to this correspondence, if there's a specific action arising, um, or potentially if this is just a receipt for information, I would be open to uh, any motion Council members may wish to make. Councillor O'Toole? I'll uh, start the discussion, I guess, sir. I'll just receive it for information. Okay, okay. thanks very much, uh, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on Councillor O'Toole's motion to receive the letter from the Minister of Justice and Solicitor General for information? I don't see anybody uh, raising their hand. And if that's the case, then I will call for the vote on Councillor O'Toole's motion. All those in favor? I'll just check to make sure with all those in favor, I see um, most hands. Um, thank you, uh, that's unanimous. Um, not that I'm trying to get it to be unanimous, but I just wanna make sure that everybody's vote gets counted the way they intended for it to be counted. Uh, so that motion does carry unanimously. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think that handles all of our items of correspondence. We had no delegations today uh, and no notice of the motion. So uh, council, we can uh, recess uh, for the rest of the afternoon. Everybody will have a chance to have something to eat before we start our evening session at 6 p.m. Uh, we have a number of public hearings uh, on the docket for uh, this evening, and so we will see council uh, and public and administration back at 6 p.m. for the second half of our session. Uh, we are recessed. Thank you. All right, um, 